Okay, so in the previous video, we talked about the purpose of the injector and how to inject your sample into the machine itself. And we said we have to use these Hamilton syringes. And the Hamilton syringes must be cleaned before and after with what? Yeah, acetone or methanol. So in this video, we're going to talk a little bit more about the injector piece and a little bit more about an alternative way to inject a sample if you don't want to do it by hand. So previously we talked about this piece of rubber and we said this piece of rubber was called the septum and the purpose of the septum is to basically be a plug. That way uh, the sample cannot escape from the injector site and up and out of the injector port uh, from where you just injected it. So this plug is pretty important and the plug cannot be dry rotted and the plug cannot be cracked or rotted. Uh, and if it is, it's not going to trap your sample into the injector, so that way it can vaporize the sample and send it on through the machine. So these are just uh, various pictures of different types of receptor. Uh, septa. We said that 50 to 100 injections is where we need to replace them. Uh, and they come in all different shapes and they come in all different sizes and they come in all different types of material. Those types of things we're really not concerned with. Um, those types of uh, materials or the approved septa will depend on your instrument, it will depend on the manufacturer, it will depend on the type of samples that you'll be injecting. So there's a whole assortment of different ones that are out there. Just keep in mind uh, that they do come in a variety pack of different flavors and it's really up to you to figure out which one is the best for your instrument and your analysis that you're doing at that moment in time. So uh, we said that the syringes um, also come in a variety pack of different sizes and different shapes. Uh, the syringes can go anywhere between $150 to $800 a piece. Uh, these are not cheap, right? So it's very important that you handle these with care. It's very important that you don't pull out the plunger of the syringe completely out of the barrel itself, because if you do, you won't be able to put it back in there. And then the syringe is now ruined. So that could be $800 that you have just forced this to throw down the trash, and we don't want that to happen, right? Another thing that typically goes on is the syringe needle itself, and these needles um, are pretty flexible, and the problem with that is that if you are puncturing this needle into that piece of rubber, and that piece of rubber is brand new from the septum, then you could actually bend and put a, a crease or a crinkle in the syringe itself and then that syringe is ruined because there's no way that you can straighten out the barrel and we've got to trash that away as well so again another 150 to 800 dollars that's now thrown out the window for no purpose whatsoever uh, a couple of the syringes uh you know you'll see these normal ones that we just say open syringes and then this one down here at the bottom this is what we call the plunger in the needle so this is more, I guess you could say, gas tight. Uh, you actually see a piece of rubber here at the bottom, or Teflon, and that will prevent uh, some sample from escaping. So it's just a different type of sucking mechanism that the syringes use. What you'll find most is that these two up on top, these are the open forms, that is more common than the plunger in the needle. What we find is that plunger in the needle really is for large barrels or large syringes. That's where you see them the most. Um, and honestly, you won't be injecting that much sample into the GC hardly ever. Remember, we said 1 to 20 microliters on average. So 1 to 20 microliters would be something like this size, not something like this down here at the very bottom. So they do come in different forms, different shapes, different price ranges. And uh, again, that's something that you are going to have to determine what's best for you. Your company will determine what's best for the method that you're doing. Uh, and if you're part of the competition, we determine what you will be using. So just leave it to us. We'll give you the guidance, right? Uh, now, something else that we need to talk about, an alternative way to inject samples onto the GC, uh, you saw from the very beginning in this original picture. And up here at the very top, 
you will see this attachment and there's a box up here and this box is an auto injector and this auto injector has a syringe a Hamilton syringe on the inside of it it's right in there and the purpose of the auto injector is to take the place of your hand uh, this auto injector will inject the sample into the injector port for you and you do not have to worry about it so you don't have to worry about holding the syringe you don't have to worry even about loading the syringe up you don't have to worry about anything it will take over and it will do it for you so these are really nice to have but because they know it's nice for you to have they also charge you anywhere between ten to twenty thousand dollars to have one so they are expensive but they make our life much easier and the GC Shimatsu that you will be using does have an auto injector onto the machine so literally you just put your sample into a very small vial that will sit down below in a tray and this tray will slide back and forth and the syringe will puncture the vial and it will suck up the sample and then it will uh, release the sample vial and allow it to get out of the way and then the syringe will take a second motion and it will puncture the septum in the injector port and it will squirt the sample on into the machine for you so it loads it up the proper amount it injects the proper amount it's very fluid it's very reproducible it's very precise it's everything that you would want out of an injector uh, and used to back in the day it used to be this all day long and you can kind of imagine the problems people's hands are different people load the syringes up different ways if you have different shifts that will come in and inject samples then you start to see a variety of things that will go on wrong in the chromatogram I mean you're really relying on a person to do this job for you and the automatic instrumentation makes it much better so that's what we call an auto injector or an auto sampler it cleans itself with acetone or methanol whatever you load up on it uh, it will rinse itself clean it makes sure that the needle stays fluid and clean without a problem for the next injection uh, and if you begin to see any kind of weird phony numbers that happen in your chromatograms you know probably where it's coming from so the auto injector is a very nice attachment to have and and that's what we have in our laboratory that you will be able to use uh, the next pictures in the slide are going to tell you the proper way to fill a syringe um, you know some people fill the syringes a different way than others and they get the same number uh, this is really how you train yourself in the very beginning uh, my answer to you is just be consistent you want to make sure that uh, you're injecting the same way every single time because if you're not uh, then that's where the problems go and that's where the problems happen uh, here in the very first one it says draw the plunger up and down a few times to rinse the syringe so you're going to put the syringe into the sample and if you had to do this by hand you would pull the sample up in the syringe and then you would take it to the side and squirt it out and then you would put the syringe back into the beaker and do that a second time and a third time and maybe a fourth time you're just really preparing the syringe with your sample and getting rid of any contamination that might be up here in this area first you're then going to put your sample or syringe down into the sample and then you're going to pull up very slowly some people like to pull air up first and some only don't pull any up at all uh, and my my advice is that I don't really pull any air pockets in uh, what I do is that I put the syringe into the beaker I pull the syringe backward and fill this syringe overfill it really in a way more than what I need at least in the barrel itself then when I do that I'll take a look at the barrel so here it looks like you know that's maybe two and a half uh, so we're looking at two and a half microliters maybe uh, and that's okay but you know what if I just wanted one microliter to be injected okay so I would need something like down in here so I would pull back more than what I would need and then I would take a look at it and if it looks something like this with no air bubbles at all on the inside it's just very fluid very open uh, as far as clean goes then this is a perfect sample feel it has no air bubbles in it you're ready to inject but if you pull back and it looks like something like this was there's an air bubble on the center or maybe on each end 
then that's a problem too. You don't really want that air bubble to be present because that's taking up space. So normally, sometimes what you can do is turn the syringe up like a nurse would and give it a few flicks with your finger and push out some of the extra sample that you pulled up into the syringe. That's why I do that in the very beginning. And a lot of times you can push that air bubble out um, and the air bubble will no longer be inside of the syringe itself. So that's something that you might want to consider. Down here at the very bottom, this is really all air. There's no sample that got filled up in that at all. And you can really tell the difference between the sample compartment to versus the air compartment. You see how that looks different? You can kind of you can clearly see it here with the air bubble and the sample on each side. So that's something that you want to look for. That's something that you want to make sure that you have. You know, you're working with very tiny amount of volume, honestly. And these things are going to be very hard to see. But what I have found that works for me the best, it might be different for you, but I always put my syringe into the sample, flush it a couple of times and get rid of it, and then pull back way more than what I need to inject. And then I just slowly push the plunger up until I get to the volume that I need to inject in. And if there's any air bubbles in the syringe at that time, it will push those on out and then you'll be okay for your injection. Uh, after you uh, fill up to the proper amount, you'll then go to the GC system. This is a Galmac. We actually have some of these in the laboratory as well. Uh, these are somewhat older and we don't really use them that much anymore. Uh, but there's the injector port right there front and center and you can see this person has injected the syringe into the injector port and now squirting the sample into the machine for analysis. Uh, when you push the sample in you want to be very quick about it. You don't want to be slow like molasses, right? You want to put the syringe in, squirt the sample all in at one time, and then quickly pull the sample or syringe out. That should be a one very fluid motion. You don't want to be jaggedy with the syringe as you pull it out. You don't want to take your time pulling it out because all of that could open up avenues for your sample to escape the injector port. And that's something that we want to prevent. Okay, uh, so here's another close-up picture of an injector, an auto injector. Uh, this has a wheel injector over here to the side. It probably can hold 70 or more samples um, onto the machine. And this will just rotate and load up a vial. And the syringe is going to be in the auto injector. And the syringe will pull the sample up. And then it will move the vial back over to its spot. And then it squirts the sample into the machine through the injector side. Okay? All right, so that's where this video is going to stop. And in the next video, we're going to talk about another piece of the, uh, in the injector port, and that's called the glass insert.